Our fourth speaker is Mark Handover from Mentor, a Siemens business system. Um, he's going to speak about advanced UVM debug. He's a digital design and verification solutions expert uh, involved in SOX for over 20 years. Mark, I'll let you go ahead because I know you've only got 15 minutes and I don't want to take all your presentation with, a, with an introduction. So, off you all go. Right. thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so, uh, as Mike said, uh, Mark Handover from Mentor. Uh, so, we're going to talk about uh, UVM debug uh, and introduce Mentor's debug solution, debug environment uh, for UVM debug. Um, so, so, this is a uh, a slide from uh, the 2018 uh, verification study that Mentor do every two years uh, between Mentor and the Wilson Research Group. Uh, so this shows where verification engineers are spending time. Uh, so I guess no no real surprises here, um, but uh, just kind of to note, I guess, that two working days of a verification engineer on average are spent in debug. So verification engineers, you know, designing test benches, developing test benches, running simulations, developing tests, actually a lot of time is spent in debug. Uh, so it's obviously a real focus uh, for us and, and other vendors uh, and you guys uh, challenged with verification too uh, in trying to reduce this debug time. So in terms of debug challenges for a debug environment, uh, what we hear, uh, what we see uh, is a number of areas. Uh, so top of the list, or one of them anyway, is capacity. So designs are obviously getting bigger, uh, test environments are getting bigger. So you need a tool, an environment that enables you to load uh, and cope with very large designs. Uh, so you want a very responsive tool, not only in load time, uh, but not a tool that lags when you open a waveform or try and open a schematic view uh, or zoom in and out. Um, you want a very reactive tool. Um, so the other side is efficiency. Uh, so part of that is reaction time, uh, so being able to load and use the tool, um, but also visibility. So this is the the idea of you know what signals do you log, um, and the more you log, uh, you don't want it to impact simulation time too much. So there's always a trade-off, or always has been, uh, in terms of how much signal uh, debug visibility do you enable. Um, and what's the trade-off uh, for simulation time. And then debug, uh, so obviously debug uh, is typically done live or post-sim, uh, more and more post-sim. Uh, test bench debug, uh, UVM especially, obviously is dynamic objects. So there lies a, a use model question. Um, do I run interactive, uh, live sim? Uh, uh, and can I run post-sim? Uh, and so we're gonna look at uh, ways you can actually do post-sim uh, UVM debug uh, with our tool visualizer. And then finally, you're probably uh, running or the team will be running multiple uh, debug engines. So you may be running some emulation as well as simulation. You may have UPF, you may be running formal, FPGA prototyping. What you really want is a unified platform for debug. Uh, so rather than learning five different debug tools, uh, just pick up one debug tool uh, and have the same debug for each of the environments. Obviously, reduces the the effort involved in debug, uh, having to learn multiple tools. So this is kind of where Visualizer sits. So Visualizer is our relatively new debugger. It's been around a few years, um, and this is a tool that we're rolling out uh, across all our engines. Uh, so whether it be simulation, formal. Uh, low power UPF emulation, uh, they will all use Visualizer or do use Visualizer as the debugger. So whichever engine you're using, you're presenting with a consistent common debug platform. And it's across technologies. So this is for UVM, it's for low power UVF, UPF, it's for RTL, uh, so DUT debug, uh, transaction debug, um, wherever you're sitting in the technology space, uh, you should be able to use Visualizer for that too. <laughs> so Visualizer, uh, kind of gives you a, a number of benefits. Um, so as well as being a cross-platform debugger, so a common debug engine, it's also very fast. Uh, so we're actually recording less data. Um, so obviously you enable some visibility, uh, you tell Visualizer what it is you want to record, but we actually record less data and then we reconstitute data on the fly as you demand it. So we're logging less data, which means that compared to standard simulation data logging, uh, we're actually quicker. Uh, and we've been in benchmarks in this area. 
um, against competition and obviously internal benchmarks as well. So just switching on, say, uh, Questa debug versus Visualizer debug uh, or any other simulation debug, uh, you can see a performance throughput increase um, in terms of runtime when running Visualizer. And obviously recording less uh, means we use less memory, um, which also has a knock-on effect on performance, but also gives you the choice now, uh, potentially, of uh, machines you can run on. It's high capacity, uh, so we can load very large designs uh, very quickly um, and also it's very reactive uh, so you know instantly draws waveforms instantly brings up schematics there's very good searching capabilities that are very efficient in the tool um, and allows you to do debug of uvm live sim and post sim so interactive simulation and offline uh, post sim debug as well so we'll talk more about that shortly so back to this case of visibility, uh, why is this so key and why is it a benefit in Visualizer? Um, so this is maybe a typical a day for uh, verification. So you've run regression, maybe it's a Monday, uh, so you've run your regression over the weekend. Uh, so you have no tracing, no visibility enabled, it runs fast. Um, but you come in uh, early morning on Monday and you have some bugs. Uh, so the first step is obviously triage. So you're looking at the design. Uh, trying to understand uh, where uh, those bugs are. Uh, and then we're going to have to start enabling some visibility, some debug tracing uh, in order to try and figure out what the problem is. So we enable some level of tracing. We don't want to do too much because uh, it will run the simulation slower. Um, and we have to you know, get the work done. Uh, so we make a good guess at where we need to debug, enable the trace set and rerun, run some more debug. Uh, find we need more tracing, uh, so we add another uh, level of traceability, uh, run some more simulation, data collection, and so on and so on, uh, until eventually uh, we find the bug, hopefully. We may add to add dollar display if there's not enough visibility there, but all this takes time. Uh, so we're running and running and running uh, with debug steps in between and adding more and more visibility, which is slowing the simulation down more and more. So what Visualizer allows you to do uh, is reduce some of this. Um, so now you can run regression. You obviously run that fast with zero tracing potentially. You go through your triage step, but then you just flip on and debug. Uh, so Visualizer is designed such that you can enable full debug uh, with very, very low impact on simulation time. Um, so it's getting towards the stage where you don't need to decide whether you want to run with visibility or not. You can just run with uh, visibility enabled, and the impact is very, very small. <laughs> so uh, you can run minimum trace sets uh, and get very fast simulation and compact results. Um, and the logging uh, overhead, as I said, uh, is very low. And we do this smart kind of reconstitution on the fly as you demand data. So let's talk specifically about UVM. Um, so let's uh, give you a few insights into what UVM debug uh, looks like inside Visualizer. So traditional debug, uh, you run interactive uh, live sim typically to debug the UVM stuff. Uh, and post and debug is for the zeros and ones, so for your DT typically. Um, so Visualizer, uh, we've kind of turned that around and we treat classes as first class objects, uh, which means we can do them in post sim as well. Uh, and so we've kind of you know, ported the, the post sim, the offline debug uh, to the UVM paradigm. Um, so you know, obviously this has benefits. Uh, one, you don't necessarily need to run interactively. Uh, a lot of the data is available offline in a post sim environment, which also means you free up the simulation license. So if you're limited on simulation seats, um, then you know this now just takes a debug seat. So it enables a, a number of benefits there. If you're new to UVM um, or you've inherited some test bench from somewhere else, uh, then you know it's nice to be able to visualize things. There's a number of visualization tools within Visualizer. Um, so one of those is uh, the UVM schematic, which we're looking at here. Um, so this is a kind of just enables you to view the topology. So it's nice just to be able to see how things are connected up um, and what that looks like. Uh, and so here uh, we're seeing uh, a scoreboard, the DUT, uh, the agents and how they all connect together. 
And this is a schematic, so obviously we can push down, um, we can uh, trace around the schematic uh, just to get a better understanding of the environment that we're being presented with. Uh, the config DB uh, obviously allows you to set and get data from anywhere uh, in the UVM hierarchy. Uh, so if there's an issue there, if you need to debug an issue in the config, obviously that can be challenging. Something goes wrong, uh, it can be difficult to trace that down. Uh, and so we have views in here, uh, which allows you to view the config DB. Uh, so it may be an incorrect path or name or a mismatch in type. Um, and now we can look at it and we can trace what was defined at what scope, the value and the type. And so it just gives you a better view and than having to maybe use uh, or resort to print statements. And then sequences, uh, so we have class uh, browsers, class hierarchy browsers is a sequence browser. Uh, so this is just allows you to look at uh, live uh, sequ uh, sequence hierarchies um, in, the, in the design that uh, you've defined and that are existing. And then uh, your debugging classes. Uh, so why not add them to the wave window? Uh, the wave window is typically uh, what a lot of people like to use. And so just drag them in. Uh, so we've dragged a class uh, into the wave window here. Uh, and you can add an instance of class, its virtual interfaces, its class member variables right there, right in the waveform window alongside all the other data uh, that you have as well, uh, for maybe the DUT. So this gives a, a better, potentially better way of viewing things all in the one space. And then, so a lot of this is post-SIM. Uh, this is obviously, we have a live SIM as well. Um, so you can run Visualizer. Uh, with Questa simulation running under the hood uh, in the background. And then, of course, you can step through. Uh, so, you know, not everything you can do post sim. Um, some things you want to debug uh, interactively. And so, uh, live simulation allows you to do that. Uh, step through the code, step through your test bench, set breakpoints, set conditional breakpoints, um, and, uh, and navigate your code and run to, to points in your code that might be interesting. And as mentioned, uh, Visualizer is cross-platform, uh, so it's used uh, as a front end for many of the, the mentor verification tools. Here we're showing emulation. Uh, so this is Veloce, um, our emulator. Um, we're showing a single GUI here. Uh, allows you to debug data from simulation and emulation uh, in the one environment. So as I said, you know, it enables uh, a lot of productivity here, uh, if not just in the fact that you don't need to learn multiple uh, debug engines. So that's all I had today. Uh, so, so just wanted to briefly introduce Visualizer. Uh, so as I said, it's built for speed. Uh, it's high capacity, uh, high visibility. Um, you know, hopefully Visualizer uh, starts to reduce the, uh, the worry or the uh, concern about how much and where to log information. It's easy to use, uh, enables you to, to run in post-SIM and live-SIM, uh, both for UVM debug. And as we were saying, it's uh, it's a cross-platform uh, solution. And finally, I uh, just wanted to point you at the Verification Academy. Um, if you're a member or not, uh, register. Uh, if you want any information about UVM, there's a suite of information there on the Academy. Uh, but also there's some debug information on there and some information about Visualizer as well, uh, including some videos on uh, UVM usage and UVM debug with Inside Visualizer. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. I think.